Let's talk about protein today. Every time I post my protein shake on my Instagram story, there are tons of questions that I get on it. And that's the reason why I conducted a Q&A on my Instagram page to ask all of the questions that my audience has about protein. And this video, I am going to answer all of those questions. So let's begin. Now, because there were a lot of repeated questions, I am going to cover these six topics around protein today. First will be about protein safety. In this, we are going to talk about pregnant females, the kidney health and the PCOS around protein. The second topic will be how much protein should someone consume. The third topic will be whey protein versus plant protein. The fourth topic will be vegetarian protein sources. The fifth topic will be the brands that we discuss. And the sixth will be the precautions that we should take while increasing our protein intake. So if you think you also worry about these things around protein, then keep watching till the end because this video is going to get more and more intense and informational as the video goes on. Now, there are a lot of questions around protein and the safety of consumption of the whey protein because apparently people die when they take whey protein, isn't it? But if that was the case, I would have been long gone from the planet by now. So let's talk about how exactly your whey protein is prepared and produced. But if I tell you, you make whey protein at your homes also, will you believe me? Yes, whey protein is nothing else but the liquid that you get when your milk goes bad. So the process of separating paneer from the liquid inside the milk, when you add the lemon in the hot milk and then it separates, yes, that liquid is actually whey protein. The paneer is casein protein. So our milk has these two components of protein called whey protein and casein protein. Both are proteins. The digestion of both is different. The digestion time of both is different. So since whey gets digested inside our body pretty quickly, that's the reason why it is the number one choice for people who are working out because immediately after the workout, they need a good quality protein. And the industrial process of manufacturing of the whey protein is also not very different from how you make it at home. So the milk from the animal, cow or buffalo is taken to the plant, to the factory. Yes, there the protein is pasteurized. So all the harmful bacteria and all the harmful microorganisms are killed inside of this. And then the protein is separated from the milk by just simple process of curdling. And this curdling process, all of the elements are utilized. So this liquid is used to make the whey protein and the rest of the stuff is used to make the cheese. Once the liquid whey protein is extracted from the milk, then it is spray dried and that's how the whey powder is manufactured. And that's all. Do you think it is lethal in any way? So that clarifies the myth. Whey protein will not make you dead. And now let's talk about the questions that I got around whey protein. The first question is, is it safe to have or it's promotional as family doctors have advised not to go for it. I never promote any product that I do not believe in. And I do not have any tie up with any whey protein brand so far. Okay. So when I talk about whey protein and glorify it, it's because it's worth glorifying and it's completely safe. Of course, I have also received a question about the safety of proteins in the terms of kidneys. So the question is, does the intake of whey protein has any severe impact on the kidneys as I have heard on this so commonly? Yes. So a lot of people hear and listen and read about these things where proteins are not very good for the kidneys but that's actually not true it's a myth the reason why protein is associated so deeply with the kidney health is because the metabolites the end product of the metabolism of protein are taken out of the body via kidney like all the other metabolites as well so our kidneys filter out majorly all the things that we eat in the liquid form they excreted out in the form of our urine and so is the case with protein so protein in itself, stand alone, is not going to harm your kidneys in any way. Apart from that, there are a few things that should be taken care of when you are increasing your protein content, which we are going to talk about in the sixth section of this video, as I told you in the beginning. However, the right amount of protein consumption for anybody who is completely sedentary is around 0.8 grams per kg of the ideal body weight. So for example, let's say you are 50 kgs, then you should just multiply 50 with 0.8 and that is the number of grams of protein that you should be consuming every day. However, the researchers 
also suggest that up to 4 gram per kg of the body weight is what our body can handle if you are exercising. Next question in the category of safety of proteins is, is it safe to take whey supplements while breastfeeding? Yes, it is completely safe to have whey protein while you're breastfeeding, when you're pregnant or even on the day of your delivery. The reason why is because whey protein is nothing else, as I said, it's just the fastest way of your body's absorption of protein. So when you're taking whey protein, it's going to be very readily absorbed into your body. To all the people who believe in this, this advice will be shocking for you. But, but yes, that is true. Whey proteins do not take a very long time for in your body to be digested. It roughly takes around 20 to 25 minutes. And that speed of digestion just shows that whey protein is going to be utilized very quickly for your muscle repair, for your cell damage repair and all the other repair processes of your body. The next question under the safety category that I'm picking is, I have PCOS and I've started working out recently. The trainer insists on me having protein powder. I am a vegetarian. So any vegetarian who does not have any problem with milk products can very easily consume whey protein. And for somebody who has PCOS, it will actually help that person in managing their hormones better. The reason for that is that if you're working out, your muscles would require slightly more protein than normal. And using that protein, your muscles will get stronger. When your muscles get stronger, your metabolism gets stronger. When your metabolism gets stronger, automatically your hormones get in a better sync. So anybody who has diabetes, PCOS, hypothyroidism, taking a protein supplementation along with the right kind of weight training is going to be super helpful for you. The next topic that I promised to you was whey protein versus plant protein. So the question here is your views on whey versus plant protein, which one is better? Now, I wouldn't categorize these, any one of these above the other because despite the fact that whey protein is going to be slightly easier and faster in absorption, there are certain people who cannot digest whey protein really well or who cannot digest animal proteins in general or maybe they are vegan and that's why they do not want to have a whey protein. So in all of these scenarios, having a plant protein is not a bad option. However, you should know this thing that a plant protein is definitely going to be more processed than whey protein. If you are someone who has an issue with having an ultra processed protein which has some flavor, color, you can always choose a colorless and flavorless option. However, ask yourself this thing. In the form of other processed foods, how many colors, flavors are you having on a daily basis? Your biscuits, your namkeens, your fans, your snacks, your cold drinks. All of these things have shit ton of colors, flavors, odors and preservatives and all of those things, right? If you eliminate all of these things and just add a scoop of protein, it's always going to be a better deal. Now, there were a lot of questions around the brand of protein that one should consume and I do not have a favorite brand as such uh, because as I said I do not collaborate with any brand as of now for the whey proteins so I'm going to give you a very non-judgmental aspect of the brand choice so any brand which you can get authentically will be a brand for you why I talk about this is because whey protein and supplements in general is not a very regulated market and that's the reason why a lot of contamination and adulteration happens inside of these protein powders. So if you have someone who is an authorized seller or you know exactly how to trace back using the barcode on the package, you should always do that by the way. If you're doing that and you are sure that the product you're using is authentic, you should completely go ahead and have any brand that is available to you. Another thing that you might want to take care of when choosing a protein is that which form of protein you're taking. So it can be a whey concentrate, it can be a whey isolate, or it can be a whey hydrolyzed. The difference between the three is the protein concentration. So the protein concentrate, the whey concentrate is anywhere between 70 to 80% whey. The isolate is around 90% whey and the hydrolyzed is more than 90%. And on top of that, it is also divided or broken down into its amino acids. So this is the reason why the hydrolyze is even more faster in the terms of absorption. However, the cost of the product also goes higher as the percentage of protein goes higher. And when you are a beginner, when you're just starting out the workouts or when you're just 
trying to make up for your protein content by just adding a little bit of protein in the uh, you know powder form then i would recommend that you go start with the protein concentrate because anyway when you're working out after you have finished your workout you need a combination of carbs and protein both for the right muscle gain and this is the reason why whey concentrate will be the best option for you because concentrate has some carbohydrates already now let's talk about the vegetarian protein sources so there are a lot of options when it comes to vegetarian sources of protein if you are a consumer of milk and dairy then milk curd paneer is they are all very concentrated forms of protein otherwise if you do not have even that then all the lentils pulses are a very good source of protein so your chana rajma um, any dal for that matter even peas are a pro predominant sources of protein yes all of the vegetarian sources of protein also come with a lot of carb load as well but as i've mentioned it before after the workout you need the right combination of carb and protein both in fact the research is support that you need three times the carb three portions of carb and one portion of protein for the optimum usage of protein inside of your body so carbs are anyway a very important nutrient and if you are taking it in the plant form and taking legumes and lentils which also have the combination of carbohydrate and protein what's better than that apart from that one thing which i see hardly anybody talking about is that all of the grains yes they are a predominant source of carbohydrates but all of the grains also have some protein so every chapati that you have has 2 grams of protein one cup of oat when you have has 2 grams of protein every cup of rice cooked that you have also has 2 grams of protein so when you are calculating your proteins you do not only have to stack eggs and eggs upon eggs you can also take care of the vegetarian sources along with and calculating your grains as well as a protein source because they are also adding up now let's move on to the precautions that you have to take when you are increasing your protein intake so as i mentioned before in this video our body has the capacity to digest up to 4 grams of protein per kg of your body weight every single day however that is only the case with the people who have had a long term history of workout and they work out pretty much every single day and pretty heavy workouts they do heavy liftings and as a result of that their muscle fibers absorb all of that protein for the repair another research also suggests that optimal usage of protein can only happen when you are taking 20 to 22 grams of protein in one meal so all of these videos on instagram which are saying 50 grams of protein per meal 55 grams of protein per meal are actually crap because your body cannot digest more than 20 to 25 grams of protein optimally at one go so the best way for protein consumption would be to divide your protein in the entire day so your breakfast can have maybe one or two sources of protein your lunch can has a source of protein your dinner can have a source of protein for example your breakfast can have milk or eggs your lunch can have some curd and some dal and your dinner can also have some maybe an omelet or maybe some chicken if you have or maybe a big bowl of dal and that's how you will be able to make up for your main meals of protein and in the snack you can maybe throw in some sprouts or some hummus as a protein source and if you are a complete beginner you are not having enough protein every single day this will show as tiredness this will show as body pains this will show as delayed muscle soreness after the workout and when you see these signs that means you need to amp up your protein content and when you are increasing the protein content just so that your kidneys are safe here are a few precautions that you can take firstly make sure that you are dividing your protein appropriately as i have already discussed second thing your body requires a lot of water also when you are in the digestion phases of protein because as we discussed the metabolite of the protein the end product of the metabolism of protein is excreted from the body through kidneys and kidneys the propulsion of all the so basically the way everything moves forward into your kidney depends a lot on how much water there is available for the your kidneys so make sure that you are well hydrated i've discussed this many a times on my channel i will say this again you need 
35 to 40 ml of water per kg of your body weight and if you are increasing your water content then you can increase your protein content also safely for anyone like you and me 1.5 grams of protein per kg of the body weight should be like the ideal upper limit because beyond that we would not even need because we are not lifting that heavy anyway like athletes do another thing that we need to take care of when increasing the protein content is the fiber intake so when i see people increasing their protein content i see them going literally crazy after protein because they are as i said stacking egg over egg over egg and as a result of that their poop gets blocked they feel constipated and this is happening because either they are not drinking enough water or they are not having enough fiber in their meals because these two are the elements which are going to help your proteins propel inside of your body so fiber is going to give a good platform to your intestines where all the nutrition uh, absorption and a lot of vitamin generation can happen and as a result of that your proteins will be utilized better if you are having fiber intake in the optimal way in simple words all i am saying is that if you are trying to have a 10 egg white egg in the breakfast rather than that and rather than blocking your poop after eating that you can have a vegetable and oats omelet which is going to give you some carbs which is going to give you some fiber and the egg whites are also going to be there not 10 for sure because around 3 to 4 will be more than enough as we discussed 20 to 25 grams of protein in one sitting this way your breakfast will not only be way more balanced but also because of the carbohydrates you will not crave for sweet in the entire day or any cravings for that matter apart from that when you are having enough carbohydrates there is something called as protein sparing action that happens which primarily means that when you are having enough carbohydrates your protein is free to do its muscle building job otherwise if you are not having enough carbohydrates and just stacking protein over protein your protein will be utilized for energy consumption for energy production rather than muscle building and this is like saying you are using somebody with a ceo level capabilities as a pn carbohydrates are cheaper carbohydrates are more readily available and carbohydrates bring in a lot of taste on your plate so have your carbohydrates and spare your protein for doing its muscle building action another question that i wanted to specifically pick up which whey protein do you like the most i personally like vanilla flavored whey concentrates the reason for that is that vanilla flavored protein is such a strategic addition to my diet because it can go in my banana shake it can go in my banana ice cream it can go in my mango shake as well and my mango ice cream because if you pick up chocolate chocolate may not go really well with mangoes at least for me no thank you so all the artificial flavor and color that i am having is only in this vanilla flavored protein and there is no color there is just this flavor of vanilla and if i want to make it chocolatey i add some unsweetened cocoa powder so my ice creams are made like this i freeze some bananas or mangoes and then put them in the blender mix it up with a little bit of milk and a scoop of protein and some vanilla extract or some chocolate extract whatever i'm making and then just freeze this there is no sugar there is nothing sinful that i've added and i can enjoy my ice creams in this scorching heat if you are someone who loves ice creams i would definitely highly recommend you to try this and one bonus tip add some chocolate chips on that banana ice cream and on that note i hope you loved this protein video as much as i loved making it if you did let me know in the comments and if you have any questions that you want me to address on this channel please let me know that as well on my youtube in the comment section or you can come and say hi to me on my instagram page and i will see you in the next video bye